No, I'm not going to paint a rosy picture about biotech today. I'm about to revolutionize with the video. I'm about to tell you some amazing insights which will blow your mind away. Well, truth be told, there are a lot of bashing going around the biotech sector, right? So let me ask you a question. What do you need to start the next IT company? 10 laptops and you're good to go. While biotech needs massive investments, but we all know somewhere down in our mind that biotech is the future. Biotech is the savior and biotech has saved us from COVID pandemic. But still, why do we bash the biotech sector? Is because it has failed to be an employment generator. And that is where I always say that biotechnology sector is not a opportunity problem. It is not that you're not getting opportunity. It's an eligibility problem because you need to run, you know, run important costly equipment, right? Which will go into crores of rupees. So obviously not everybody will be ready and trained for that. And that's the reason it has failed to be an employment generator because you can't employ just general public into that. You need specialized knowledge. So today's video, we are going to talk about those 10 specialized fields, specialized knowledge in which you can train yourself, probably through Biotechnica or anywhere else, and then you can be ready for the future. The title of this video, like I said, is revolutionizing the sector with these 10 techniques, 10 technologies, which is going to change the lives of the people in the future, right? So obviously, the number one innovation which will come is always going to be CRISPR gene editing. You already know it. We have run so many programs on CRISPR already. Precision genetic modifications, revolutionizing healthcare, and ethical consideration. These are the three things which we have to consider when we are talking about CRISPR. So let's jump to the first one, precision genetic modifications. CRISPR will allow you to cut the gene precisely so that you know your gene of interest, you know the area of interest, you will cut that exactly and it will give you an opportunity to change the traits of human body, probably a blue-eyed baby. But hey, that is where the ethical consideration comes up. But imagine if we could delete that particular gene which causes diabetes. We could wipe out diabetes from earth. We could remove that particular gene which causes any genetic disease, any rare disease, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and we could save so many lives, right? So that is where CRISPR holds the promise. So obviously there will be ethical debates. Imagine if I could edit the wheat genome and I could make it immune to some certain kinds of pests. So it's a huge thing, right? So precision genetic modification is the first promise and that is why CRISPR gene editing is the first innovation. But that is where the next one which comes up and that is CAR T cell therapy. I'm sure you have heard of it. Innovation number two, CAR T cell therapy. It has revolutionized cancer uh, treatment as we speak. Cancer is one of the fastest growing disease at a pandemic level as, as we speak because of the lifestyle. And CAR T cell therapy represents a revolutionary approach to treat certain types of cancers, offering new hope to patients with limited treatment options. So CAR T cell therapy is one of the biggest breakthroughs after CRISPR. Now, it helps you personalize the immunotherapy. By engineering a patient's own immune cell, we can use this therapy to create personalized treatments tailored to each individual's unique immune system. So there will be less immune response against it. And that is where the challenges and advancement comes into picture. Even though it is promising, CAR T therapy also presents challenges such as managing the side effects and ensuring its accessibility to patients in need because it is costly. So both these challenges can be addressed in the future if you jump in to CAR T cell therapy research. So this is the innovation number two where you can get in. Now let's look at the third one, which is obviously 3D and 4D bioprinting. You look at the bioprinting technology as it advances, it is going to wipe out one complete industry, which is organ donation industry. Imagine you could print the organs. You could print a heart, you could print a liver, and then you could tr transplant it into the body. That is something which is baffling the scientists that this is something which we should do. Why should we wait for the donor? Why should we 
Why can't we just take the cell of the patient and generate the particular organ? We do have stem cells available. So that is where bioprinting technology is one such technology which is going to grow leap and bounds and medical breakthroughs in the 3D bioprinting will revolutionize the organ transplant industry. It will reduce the wait times for the uh, patients and of course it will address the shortage of organ donors. You don't need to wait for them. But there will always be ethical and regulatory consideration where somebody can misuse this particular uh, organ or uh, suppose the patient did not give the consent and his organ was printed. So that is something which will be a regulatory problem in the future. But definitely innovation doesn't is not afraid of regulation. It is just there to grow and help the mankind become better in what we do. So yeah, innovation number three, 3D bioprinting. The next one which we have is obviously very simple, precision medicine. You take a medicine, I take the same medicine, you have a different effect, but I have a side effect. <laughs> so what if we could target the treatments? What if we could customize healthcare? What if we could customize according to the patient, according to the immune response of the patient, especially in cancer, especially in rare diseases? And that is where genomic advancement is helping us. Advancement in genomics have enabled us to identify specific genetic markers, paving the way of precise disease diagnostics and treatment. And that is where it is going to impact the healthcare in a massive way. Today, one size fits all is the era. But that era is about to vanish with precision medicine. And that is the innovation number four, which you should look out for and where you can make a career. Moving ahead, innovation number five is obviously synthetic biology. If you've heard of synthetic biology, good for you. If you have not, let me explain. Synthetic biology involves redesigning biological systems, offering potential solutions for addressing environmental, health and agricultural challenges. What if we could create a synthetic organ which solves a problem, right? That's a great opportunity for all of us to work on. Biotechnological applications is something which, where synthetic biology holds a great promise. We will be able to develop new bio-based products and technologies impacting various industries and disciplines. And that is where innovation number five, synthetic biology comes into picture. Now let's look at the innovation number six, which is the real solution of the current problem. So what's the current problem? So you have a current problem which says, okay, we um, have petrol and diesel, right? Fuel, but this pollutes the environment. So what if we could generate a better solution. So humans came up with a better solution and that is, as you know, batteries, right? Now, now, what's the problem with batteries? The problem is batteries are not green. They're being marketed as green, but they're not green. Imagine if the whole world is using batteries, there'll be a big pile of batteries sitting outside Ghaziabad. What you saw as a big pile of uh, garbage, it'll be a big pile of batteries. Right? It is not at all green. It is going to harm the environment in the same way as petrol and diesel. But that is where blending comes with biofuel. What if we could reduce the usage of petrol and diesel using biofuels? Biotech advancements have led to the production of biofuels. Already we are using Jetrofa and uh, Indian Institute of Petroleum Research, IIPR has come up under Dr. Anjan Ray with this promising fuel which is being now used in Indigo Airlines. Right? So air turbine fuel, ATF, that is where they are blending biofuel and that is reducing the cost of flying by indigo. Cost optimization, lesser pollution and of course we are growing the crops which is obviously cleaning the air. So renewable resource development. It is a renewable resource. You can grow it, you can use it and again you can grow it. So it's an amazing way of keeping the environment clean and of course solving the nature's problem that is pollution. So that is the innovation number six which is going to take a lot of uh, mileage and energy, a, a lot of acceleration in the near future. Innovation number seven will be nanotechnology in medicine. So what if we could send a nano robot which will do the job? So obviously precision medicine, precision drug del delivery is where it will be. Today the drugs just flow by random and they will go and at, you know uh, attach with any sensor. So, you know sensor. So what if it goes and uh, so I want my drug to go and attach only to liver not to any other organ. But my drug is going into the neurons. My drug is going into the lungs. I don't want that, right? What if we could send nanorobots inside? Who will do the job and come back? So precision drug delivery is one such field where nanotechnology comes into picture. 
diagnostic advancement. What if nanorobots could go in and check if there is stone in the gallbladder, they could take the pictures and come back. So that's where nanotechnology comes into picture and it will revolutionize the future treatment modalities and that is what excites me the most. In fact, nanotechnology is one technology which excites me most among all of them. So nanotechnology in medicine is look out for in the innovation uh, sector in biotech and that is innovation number seven. The next one which I have for you is wearable health technology. Fun fact, you have Apple, you have Samsung, you have um, uh, various other companies who are developing wearables, but they are failing to do the right job. How long can you really wear those wearables? Of course, whole day, but there can be side effects of that. Are they accurate enough? Can they really do what we want them to do? All of this, whether it is manufacturing, whether it is quality control, whether it is monitoring, whether it is finding out more future um, scope of doing better things with wearables, that is where you will be used. That is where your brain energy can be used. Health tech, health monitoring, integration with health systems and finding the challenges and solving them, finding newer opportunities in health tech, that is where wearable health technology is going and that is where you can get in. You can work in Samsung, you can work in Apple and develop newer, better products which will make uh, better, which will solve better uh, in a better way and uh, solve the challenges of the humanity which we face. Uh, for example, you see uh, old people are prone to falling any moment. What if we have the sensors will predict the fall? Of course, if Apple has it now. And what if we could stop that from happening? What if we could give a uh, cover so that they don't fall and even if they fall, they don't get hurt? We can increase the lifespan. So you can do a lot of life saving things if you get into the wearable tech market. The last one, the ninth one which I have is blockchain in healthcare. Data security is very important. So all this data is being stored in servers. What if we can use blockchain to save this data and uh, while we can also keep a transparency so that we know, okay, this data is not hacked by somebody and then misused. And of course, we can transform the healthcare operations using blockchain. So blockchain is one more innovation in biotech sector, which will help. The last one which I have for you is AI and machine learning and drug discovery. I'm personally working on this particular project as we speak. Drug development automation is going to be the biggest revolution of the century. And what if we could do it in a faster, cheaper, better way in, with more accuracy? And that's the focus here using AI. Today using AI, you can make puffer points, you can uh, write essays and paragraphs, but in the near future, you are going to use AI to find better protein ligand docking, to find better uh, functional groups of the drug, which will attach better, which will only attach to the particular uh, organ and not attach to other organs. So AI and machine learning is going to revolutionize the way we do drug discovery, I've spoken a lot about it in the past. So you can refer my past videos. And of course, it will help us find personalized medicine for all the patients. So these are the 10 future biotech innovations which are going to revolutionize in the near future. The reason I made this video is I wanted to tell you that there is a lot of scope, promise and glory in this. There is going to be a lot of regulatory issues where you can make a career. It's going to be a lot of ethical implications where you can make a career. You can collaborate with multiple labs at the same time and proceed forward. And you can create simple as well as complicated biotech companies and innovations out of this. The future is all yours, but point is, are you a yesayer or a naysayer? If you are just sitting here to criticize, you will never find solutions. You will never find opportunities. But from the place where I sit, I only see opportunities and a bright future for every individual who is pursuing a biotech degree. All you have to do is persist. Promise yourself you're not going to give up. Keep moving forward. One step at a time, you're going to get there, soldier. All the best. Take care. Bye-bye.